Yo, are you finding the black male presence in media diminishing? Almost every time you check out a project, you're finding fewer and fewer black men, or if there are any, they're weaker, and weaker, more silent, more complacent, if they exist in that realm at all. But if that's the case, I wouldn't worry about it, because this won't be the first time you're told to piss on your head is rainwater. What's good, y'all? Hope everybody's well. Welcome back to the Honest Report. Black masculinist news for the day. Yeah. About to uh, take my son to the DMV, get some of this paperwork done so I can get this boy driving. So I'll try and get this in, in a short hit if I could. Give you some things to think about. Um, but that being said, support the goal. Trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. I'm just a couple thousand away. So if you could support the channel, subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Beyond that, like, share, again, subscribe, join, donate, support the channel, if you will. And you can see right here on the screen, you can do so with Super Chat. You can go to Patreon and become a member and support both the Onyx Report and the Institute for Black Male Studies. You can buy merchandise there, as a matter of fact. Um, there's a lot of ways to support. But I urge you to do so, so we can continue to bring independent black male thought uh, to you on subjects that range all over the place. You know, uh, we're not limited to just one or two, except to the extent that I advocate for black men and boys uh, using critical analysis and data. We are data driven here. That's the point. That's the push we respond to. So that being said, let's go. Uh, I was recently sent a piece um, for the recent American Black Film Festival, this year's festival took place in June, if I'm not mistaken. This article is dated May. And I had planned to do this one earlier, but, you know, kind of got uh, lost in the sauce. I got sick for a while, you know, just running around taking care of things, teaching classes, you know what it is. It's been a crazy summer. But that being said, we're getting to it now because I thought it was important. So American Black Film Festival reveals 2022 Spotlight screenings lineup. This is blackenterprise.com. And this is the same picture I used for the thumbnail. This is what grabbed my attention because I'm thinking this is just American Film Festival, Black Film Festival, excuse me. They're just going doing the lineups and they were, but the picture caught my attention. And if you can't see why, then you must not be familiar with my channel. This is not an indictment of black women, but in, in many different industries, one of the things I'm noticing as an ongoing and rep a, a repetitive trend is that we find that black men's absence is somehow okay with everybody. Nobody seems to have a problem with it, most particularly heterosexual black males. And if we kind of talk about representation, heterosexual black males that actually want to see themselves as strong, productive and capable, much the way many are in everyday life. But in front of the camera and behind the camera, I think we're witnessing a diminishment of the black male presence. And so it's not as much an indictment of where black women are going, but more a questioning of how black males absence is being treated. And if you're supposed to be a community, which is what I was always raised to believe, isn't it interesting that even those that are advancing don't seem to give a damn? But anyway, the balance, I mean, the lineup for this, you know, comes off as, as you know, a fairly close balance. I mean, this paragraph here kind of gives us a sense of what's going on, right? This year's collection of live spotlight screenings included, um, you know, Rap Shit, new series created by Issa Rae. You got Down With The King starring Freddie Gibbs. Sneak peek of Prime Videos, um, A League of Their Own, Shante Adams, you know, and they kind of go down the list. Victoria Rowell, uh, Stanley Nelson, Andre Gaines, Remy Ma, Papoose, Kenrick, Sonequa, Martin Green, Naturi Naughton, Lisa Ray McCoy, Ben Crump, you know, they go down the list. Many of these people I'm not really familiar with, you know, 
I'm old school. I'm mostly a movie watcher. I don't watch a lot of series. So, you know, hey, I didn't have one thought one way or the other about it other than that the picture grabbed my attention. So I started to get curious. I said, I'm, I really wonder um, about what else is going on in the film industry. And then shout out to Marcus Aurelius. Um, you know, if you haven't checked his channel out here on YouTube, keep it 100. He went ahead and sent me something that I thought was uh, pretty interesting. Um, same here. There we go. A little larger so you can see it. And he sent me a fundraiser for Black Girl Film School. I said, hmm, okay, it's a nonprofit organization, right? 501c3, increase the number of black women working in film by designing inclusive film schools for girls or film school for girls to learn from behind the camera, founded in 2016. It says LA, blackgirlfilmschool.com. Now, all the websites I'm going to show you will be linked in the description box so you can go to them easily. You don't have to write it down. It'll be right there for you. And if I missed any, let me know. I'll pop it in there for you. Right. So you just go down a little bit in the description box. You'll see it listed under sources, which I do pretty much for every video. Anyway, that said, you know, $545 raised toward a thousand. Now, this was a couple of weeks ago when I got this, so it might have gone up. But based on the goal, fundraising goal, this seems like fairly small, uh, well, small organization. I thought, hmm, OK. So the first thing I'm looking at is the American Black Film Festival. And I'm thinking, OK. You know, one might want to say that it's equally dispersed men and women, but then, you know, you look at the pictures and it kind of tells another story. So I got curious and I looked up, you know, Black Girl, Black Girl Film School, of course, and went ahead and do it. Right? And this is the website for it, Black Girl Film School. Yeah, you know, pretty straightforward, pretty much what you expect to see. You know, very colorful, a lot of different black women's faces, black girls' faces, you know, black girl magic all in effect and scroll down the website look at uh, what the various things uh, black women and girls are doing and then i thought hmm, interesting all right well let me look up black boys uh, film school black males film school yeah i didn't find it okay you know well that you know that could be anything so as i kept you know kind of scrolling around looking for different things you know aside from running into this site and across this one black women film network so okay interesting you know more black women scholarships all right so those of you who are interested who may be listening to this, you know, this was one that was due in February, probably be around next year, but I'm like, okay, hmm. Black Women Film Org or film.org, that's the website. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, another one. Interesting. So let me go to the home page real quick, see if there's anything here. Then you have the Black Women um, Film Network Summit 2022. This was in March. And you can kind of see it there. All kinds of, yet again, foregrounded. Because the idea is that black girls need additional help. That being said, if we're all black in the black community and there needs to be special programs to support black girls, then obviously black boys must be doing well. I uh, have a former student of mine who is in film, he's gotten his master's degree in film. And when I asked him about it, had he heard of a black male film school Aside from laughing in my face, he said, no, and that doesn't mean there isn't one. That just means he hadn't heard of one and I haven't. So if you know of one or more, please have, be, feel free to load it up in the comment section so we can check it out. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm simply saying, hmm, interesting question. So next one I ran across was the Black Filmmakers Academy. This, now, this was interesting to me because, you know, Black Filmmakers Academy sounds like it's pretty gender neutral. Sounds like it's pretty supportive across the board, and it may very well be. One of the things I did when I scrolled down just the main page, I ran into a number of different images and videos. So you see the technical equipment, you see a film producer's face there. You know, it's always nice to see a black male face to let you know that we exist in the minds of some of the people that are watching. And then, you know, I decided to play the video and see what I'm, I could find. So let's listen to Miss Tanika Wright.
Okay. So that's great. And hopefully, you know, if I could have access to students that have participated, you see, you know, a fairly good balance. I hope that is the case. I know nothing about this organization beyond the website, but I do know if you're going to have a black woman head of an organization like this you're more than likely going to be able to tell that she's going to advocate to make sure that girls and women are represented. Great. My former student uh, let me know about the ghetto film school, which was an interesting term, a name I never heard that. So I went to the website. And one of the first things I like to do, which I urge you to do, is to check out the staff, check out the funding, check out the structure, right? But in terms of the staff, what I found was uh, one black male, right? Now there's one picture that's not... Uh, present and accounting for they accounted for so that he may be black, but I found one black male and I found one black female, which was interesting. Now, I noticed her title though is chief executive officer. I don't know how their structure works, but you know, his is director of external affairs. So I don't know. That's, that's an interesting thing, but I don't see any heavy preponderance of black men when, or women, as far as that's concerned. Um, so I was like, hmm, okay, not sure what to necessarily do about that, but it's interesting interesting to say the least. So I'm like, huh, how exactly are black men and black boys in particular uh, doing in film? Are the mechanisms there that focus on black males or are, do we have programs that are supposed to kind of be there for everybody, right? These kinds of people of color, males of color kind of dynamics, if there is anything directed at the males at all, is that the case? And one might say, well, you know, hey, these black women are starting their own programs. Black men just need to buck up and do the same. I don't have no problem with that. One of the problems I do have, however, is that when we look at the last few years in terms of how various types of funding projects have jumped off, they don't seem to be very amenable to black men and black males in general. And I can say that's not a new thing. It's not a new thing at all. I'll give you an example. So let me see. This was something sent to me not long ago. Right. Support black businesses. So TikTok opens applications for third round of support black businesses accelerator program. Right. Sounds pretty good. You know, sounds like something that uh, will benefit, you know, every anybody who applies on a fairly uh, equal basis. Right. So let's go ahead and check out the website. Right. So look more. Uh, well, this is actually an article, excuse me, about uh, the applications. Right. But one of the things I found in the article is when you actually look at the list of partners collaborating on this program, program they include WeFunder, Talent X Opportunity, See Her, Black Girl Ventures, and Shopify. Yeah. You know, ever since I was in high school, I always run into, you know, highly ambitious, intelligent Black girls, Black women who, um, you know, were very much on their grind. And they liked the fact that I was on a grind that they found comparable to what they were interested in. One of the things I noticed is they had a much deeper um, kind of sense of what could be accomplished in terms of grants, scholarships, you know, various kinds of support. I often found that I didn't have any, even as early back as, as in high school, didn't have much faith in it, but I didn't know why. And, and throughout graduate school, it was much the same. Now, I did actually get one major uh, fellowship that that basically kept me in graduate school because I was supporting a family and I almost had to drop out during the dissertation stage to support my family. I was working four jobs. I was writing my dissertation and it was barely enough that I could keep my tuition paid while I did all of that. I managed to get one fellowship that kept me in the game. I got a Ford fellowship. But beyond that, never was one to really win scholarships and grants, so on and so forth. So from high school onward, I always had these kind of girlfriends and, and female friends that would, you know, tell me about different projects that they would entertain and they would try and get me to do it. And I would apply along with them. And they would even sometimes review my application materials just to make sure I wasn't turning in some bullshit. And I found most, you know, I never won them, never got them. But she often would. And when we'd look at the structure of the programs, which is something I would do after the fact, they were often run by women or women that looked like her for that matter. And I started to kind of look at that and say, hmm. So when I look at this TikTok opens application, I don't think at all that black women run TikTok. I think if anything, the, the going trend at the moment is for corporations to get on board with the double minority framework, right? where you can get black women, LGBT, the more minority components you can add together, the more it makes you look like you are diverse. 
and more it opens you up for various types of federal funding. So you have corporations that are incentivized to look to stack up as many different diverse categories and identities as possible, which often leads, and this has been going on at least since the 1970s, and I'm, I would argue probably earlier, but 70s and 80s during my lifetime where I actually witnessed it as a kid without knowing what I was seeing. But for the most part, heterosexual black men weren't as attractive because you couldn't quite meet these federal check marks. You couldn't check those boxes the same way as if you could stack up identity categories. And this is most especially apparent after you get the advent of um, intersectionality by Kimberly Crenshaw. So if you were black, if you were female, and if you were gay, um, lesbian, bi, whatever, all the more categories. And this often left black men with very few opportunities. And I'm seeing that to be the case here because the collaborating programs, two of the four mentioned, or excuse me, one, two, three, four, five. So two of the five mentioned are directly advocations for girls, most particularly black women. We don't find any for black men. So again, when I get back to the whole question of why don't black men just build their own? Well, most of the time I find out that black men have, but they usually don't have much funding, mostly because corporations aren't necessarily interested in supporting it. It's not enough incentive for them to do so. Independently, we can ask the question of how many independent people are supporting it. Well, I can tell you, I run an institute for black male studies. It is an uphill grind to find people to support. Even on YouTube, you know, black male content creators, especially if they're focusing on black male issues, very often, aside from a couple, most are pretty much struggling to find support. The interesting thing is even in a space that is dealing mostly with black male issues, black females can come in here and build channels and grow quite fast. And that's with the support of black men. So whether we're talking about the larger society, whether we're talking about the black community as a whole, or whether we're talking about black male spaces, it's all female leaning. Don't believe me? Check out the black manosphere and check out the channels run by women that are associated with the manosphere and look at how fast those channels have grown. That's not to take anything away from the women that have done the work. And there's a number of women I particularly have a great deal of respect for in terms of the work they do from Shay Chardet to pink book lessons. And I'm not saying that means I agree with everything everybody has ever said. It just means for the most part, in an overall sense, I have a great deal of respect for the grind that those women have put in and the kind of work they bring to the table. But I've noticed there are plenty of brothers that do a similar amount of work and just don't get the recognition even from other black men. We've been acculturated to a gynocentric framework. We are female leaning in the black community and the corporations that are playing the same game for different reasons. They've not been acculturated to gynocentrism the same way black men have within the black community, especially after Generation X. We are the majority of us raised by single mothers where we've learned to prioritize women and girls in various ways. Corporations are doing so because it is a fiduciary benefit. It is an, it is an incentivized program structure where finances are extended, often from the federal level, on the basis of how many categories they can check, which doesn't usually lend itself to black men, let alone black heterosexual men. This is where we are when we look at this kind of stuff, right? And we have to become clear about what it is. So all I want to say here is I'm not interested in going out my way to denigrate women. That's not what my channel's about. My channel is about pointing out and helping black men in particular articulate the issues they face, often in areas where we're told that rainwater isn't piss. We can smell the urine. We can damn sure taste it when it's falling on our head. But everybody around us is telling us that what we're seeing doesn't exist. No, well, I'm here to tell you it often does. And we need to actually look at the evidence. We need to look at how it's happening and why. And then we need to look to see how many allies we actually have. And you all tell me, how many allies do you see black men have in this regard, in these institutional spaces? And in this context, we're talking about film. Black men are making independent projects, sometimes even recording films with their phones. They're doing it online or whatnot. But even when you look at the, t the television channels from BET, Her to TV One, how many of those are male leaning? Don't worry, I'll wait. So, yes, I've heard the age old chestnut. Black men need, need to do it themselves, but we're doing it ourselves with no support, no funding, except for what we build for ourselves one subscriber at a time. And if that's the way it's going to be, that's the way it's going to be. But don't turn around and ask me why I don't support projects that openly erase or denigrate the black male image. 
Don't ask me why I don't support them. Don't chastise me if I refuse to support them. Because they damn sure don't support us, especially when they look for every opportunity to downplay the relevance of black men and boys. I'm getting my support for that. Y'all have a good one. Peace.